So, ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I will now request Dr. Sanjeev Singh to share his antibiotic Kerala experience. And uh, thank you, Dr. Alex and Lalu and Dr. Murli for giving me this opportunity to share our experiences. <coughs> it was good to have Lalu in your team and getting the laptop on the podium where it's very easy to see what you're going to speak. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's always a virtual world. So I'm going to share uh, some of our experiences uh, in getting the antibiotic policy and infection prevention policy released at, uh, at the, in the state of Kerala. So when we started, <coughs> there were always a two schools of thought. And uh, in Kerala, there is this inherent activity of debating and critiquing. So they critique as much as they can. So there was one school of thought who always says that it's a been there, seen that syndrome. We have formulated a policy. The professors who come from the medical college, they say that we have done it in 2006 and period. So did you implement it? No, no, but we have already done that. But there was another school of thought which always said that nothing can change. It's good idea to get an antibiotic policy done, but in the state of Kerala, nothing will change. So it's, it, with these two schools of thought, we started. But <clears throat> we basically said that there is a burden of the disease. And bacterial diseases, we are talking about non-communicable disease. But unfortunately, we have still not taken care. And India is there in the forefront uh, with bacterial diseases. <clears throat> and we are pumping in antibiotics like distilled water. And the consumption for retail antibiotic is immense. And that's a worrying cause, which may be warranted, which may be unwarranted. But the issue is this, which comes from a good microbiology lab. And this is what it is. <clears throat> when the Klebsiella, Acinotobacters, and Pseudomonases were growing, our report was something like this. In 2010, our report was something like this. Extremely bad. Cholestin is considered to be a detergent. And you have to use this as an antibiotic. And in 2012, the report is like this. Now, what do you do? If you don't pull up your socks, some may say that this is a wrong report. But any high-end tertiary care which has a good laboratory would say, yes, this is the scenario. And if you are not active, and if you are not collaborating and working together, your hospitals are going to close down. In another three to four years, uh, your oncology program and transplant programs are going to close down. So there is a lot of work which needs to be done. But the bad part was there was this New Delhi Metallo Beta Lectum, which was published. And politically, everybody debated on New Delhi naming rather than is there a problem. And this is where most of us would like to work, being an ostrich saying the, the, the problem doesn't occur. And it is somebody who has given this on uh, published in the Lancet, but actually we are doing good. So we started. We also wanted to know whether is there a problem or we are just doing the work for the doing sake. So we conducted a study. We did a research within the doctors of uh, the state of Kerala. <clears throat> How many times do you prescribe antibiotics? 90% of the time, 90% of the doctors are prescribing antibiotics on daily basis. So it is like a vitamin C and vitamin B capsule. This comes from orthopedics, this comes from physicians, this comes from surgeons. And it's alarming. Do you think there is a problem? Fortunately, they think there is a problem. 70% and more think there is a problem. Do you believe that the doctors these days give unnecessary antibiotic? We asked the doctors, do you think antibiotics are unnecessarily being prescribed. 84% are saying yes, and still they are prescribing. See the irony, and that is where <clears throat> things are extremely going wrong. The behavioral change will need to happen. How do you know when the new antibiotic is released? So how do you prescribe? They ask. They don't know the mechanism of action, but they ask their senior colleague, Ye drug kaise kaam karta hai, kya lik dun, and then they write. What was good is there were honest answers from the doctors. What is bad is it is a disaster. Now, where does the buck stop? <clears throat> Microbiology lab samples are not coming on time. 
So there is a constant fight which happens between microbiology lab and clinicians. Because they say, unko kuch pata nahi hai. clinician says microbiology doesn't come, they sit in an air-conditioned room and report. And this is not helping. My patients, when the doctors were asked, <coughs> why do you prescribe, 70% of them are saying, patients force me to write antibiotic. And they are writing. So how do you change all this behavior? <clears throat> are they sending samples properly? And are they asking? Or uh, is there any continued medical education which is happening for them, at least for the protected drugs or for the newer drugs? So a lot of them, they have no clue about the newer drugs, the Penems, the Arta, Dori, Tigicyclines, all the combinations drugs, and that's the problem. What does our microbiology, so we didn't restrict ourselves to clinician. We also interviewed microbiologists. So what do they say? Lab cultures and sensitivities are done, but it is not done in 33%. So how do they know whether they are prescribed, the, the clinicians are prescribing empirically or is it a targeted therapy? Because 33% have no clue what they are writing. Infection control teams doesn't, uh, is, is not there. There are no separate discs. Now how do you will keep on prescribing an antibiotic, but there are no discs. The, the, the company who has made a new antibiotic has not produced a disc. It doesn't come to the microbiology lab. So how do microbiology report? So it will never get reported and clinicians will always have this pseudo impression that it is acting. And that's again a dangerous bit. <clears throat> and disc for many of the gram negatives. Now we say we cannot adopt Western guidelines because they have gram positives, we have gram negative. Now unfortunately see the scenario. 50 to 60 percent, they don't have the reporting capacity in the microbiology lab for the gram negative. So you, whatever you prescribe, it's going to be the therapy of choice. Now, <clears throat> what is the culture which the microbiologists have set in? <clears throat> they say physicians don't send samples for us to culture. And that is again a bad scenario because at least 60% of them, they don't send adequate samples on time. We also interviewed pharmacists. Let's see, because they are giving it over the counter. <clears throat> so pharmacist has no clue about antibiotics. They don't have any clue about the mechanism of action, but if I go, if I have a loose motion and vomiting, he, pres he gives me over the counter antibiotics. And then he doesn't give any feedback to the doctor. So is the chain closing? We say that it has to be coordinated, multidisciplinary action, it has to be continuous. Pharmacist who is giving an over-the-counter drug doesn't give any feedback to the doctors. So what's the problem? <clears throat> so when we, this started three years back, it wasn't an easy journey. It was extremely difficult. And why it was difficult? Because Whenever we, were, we used to get people on same platform, they used to say it is government's job. And government used to say it is private's job. And we actually are still figuring out whose job it is. Then the second question, no engagement, clinicians don't participate. <clears throat> second, it's good to have antibiotic policy, but nationally there is no antibiotic policy. So why should we work on antibiotic policy? Everybody used to say, let government make it regulatory. Let them legislate, and that's it. Antibiotic cannot be given. Government used to say, they don't have powers to legislate. A fantastic debate happened for almost a year. It is good that you are asking doctors to follow antibiotic policy, but what about spurious drug? You take care of the drugs first. And then we'll see. So not of standard quality drugs are available in the market, and that is why antibiotics are not working. Rampant use an animal. So it is said that if you want to eat chicken, or if you want, sorry, if you want to have ciprofloxacin, e start eating chicken now, because you will get a lot of ciprofloxacins from them. So the team used to say, work on animal husbandry rather than working on us. Labs are not ready. Let's have a good functional lab. You are telling us what to do. Who is going to tell Ayush doctor what to do? So all these reasons were there almost for a year and we have struggled over the counter prescription. Don't tell us not to prescribe. Tell this bloody pharmacist 
not to give over the counter drug. And then is there a data available? So we worked on that data and we said that yes, now the prescription pattern is a problem. So what we need to do, <clears throat> it's a complex thing. Healthcare itself is a complex scenario. Antibiotic prescription is more complex because you can always start an empirical antibiotic saying it is query sepsis. Now it's a clinical judgment and it is driven by a lot of factors. <clears throat> so it's, it's a difficult ball game. But how do we move the needle? Because it's, you cannot keep debating. You, you need to have some starting point. So we agreed after one year and three months, we agreed let's focus. Let's work on doctors at all. Right now, doctors are the one who need to know how antibiotics have to be prescribed. Forget about over-the-counter, forget about non of, not of quality drugs, forget about labs not being ready, I use doctor. Those who need to know, let them first know what is a good practice and let's work on implementation. So <clears throat> we had three agenda with us. Let's educate the medics. Let's also educate the public because they need not get into or for an upper respiratory infections or loose motions, they should not take antibiotics. But very, very important, let's also work on policy makers. <clears throat> that includes Oveduddin Qureshi and unfortunately Narendra Modi is not there because we think he's educated enough and he's moving in the right direction. But all these people, including in my state, we had worked with these policy makers. So our journey started with lots of, we had 42 travels from Cochin to uh, Trivandrum and Trivandrum to Cochin. Most of the time we were called for a meeting, but there were nobody to attend for the meeting because the communication which comes from the, from the department was so good that we actually didn't do much. But we conducted a lot of stakeholders <coughs> agenda. So we had government people, we had all other uh, parties participating in this. We worked on infection control and we worked on in antibiotic stewardship. What was good is the health secretary who is an orthopedics doctor always gave an example of Kerala tourism. Kerala tourism, the God's own country, has really worked only because the private players have worked along with the government. So let's have a public-private partnership model and let's work this even in healthcare. So there were these 18 professional bodies who were engaged at various point of time, including uh, med, uh, IMA, <coughs> the physicians, the surgeons at various point of time, and then this particular agenda was shared. The policy was made. There were three basic starting points. There is a resistance. Let's agree that there is a resistance issue. Let's also agree that there are no new antibiotics coming in for the next five to six years. But whatever is coming in is also combination therapy. Let's also agree that it is no longer <coughs> you and me and uh, game. It's about good antibiotic prescription practice. So once we do that, it will be almost good to go. So we drafted an antibiotic policy, but what was good is we had a department-wise antibiotic policy. So there was a physicians, there was a, a pediatric, neonatal, all antibiotic policy was there. <clears throat> Within this, we also had good antibiotic prescription preamble. So what we need to do, a lot of times the storage of the antibiotics doesn't have properly. We are unable to dilute with a good diluent and then the pharmacokine or bioavailability is poor. We said that please send samples appropriately before you start prescribing antibiotics. And we also kept saying, please review it on a daily basis. It should not become routine that you prescribe and it goes on till 21 days and that's not good practice. Three minutes. <clears throat> so we worked on drug to drug interaction for all the antibiotics. There was a lot of unawareness regarding pregnancy and lactation. <clears throat> Surgeons who uh, doesn't have the distinction between prophylaxis and treatment. So there was uh, antibiotic prophylaxis made for surgical department. There was always a uh, earnest request to get antifungals and antiviral because it's all a viral era. <clears throat> and then within this, almost for two and a half years, we worked on this infection prevention because until unless your hand hygiene and medical and surgical asepsis is not proper, it's no point working on antibiotic policy. But government works on these two famous words, GO, 
until unless there is a government order, nothing moves in the government, and I realized it very late. So once the antibiotic policy was made, there was a geo which has been released to all hospitals, and it should reach all hospitals in Kerala. There's a government order which has come to all laboratories that they need to practice it properly, and there's a government order which is coming to all pharmacists that they need to adhere to good pharmacy practice. So what we were looking is not a perfect policy <clears throat> because idealistics and perfectionism is a disease. We were looking at an implemented policy and that is what we worked on. And then this particular policy was released, which was disease wise, which was risk stratified wise because primary healthcare and tertiary healthcare phenomena will be di different. And we also worked on 32 unjustified combination and we are very, very happy that FDA has banned those combinations because this was again a fight along with the, with the Drug Safety Council for six to eight months. There are lots of unjustified combination. First antibiotic policy got released. <clears throat> it was unveiled by the health minister of the state. And then we also have a plan for sustainability. It is just not organizing a national symposium and <clears throat> preparing again a word document. So it's a four year plan where we are going to engage with all 18, 32 medical colleges, 18 public hospitals, and select 64 private hospitals, where there needs to be a training, education, <coughs> auditing, and work. But what was very, very good to give a boost was Dr. Girdas Gyani's support on AHPI, where <coughs> the scroll of honor was also given to Amrita Institute, where Maharashtra government also said that it's fantastic that the state of Kerala has released it. We are also wanting, and Indians are very, very good copycats. So government has started working on it. <clears throat> so to summarize, the way forward is there are lots of islands of experience which happens in the private sector. But we don't coordinate and we don't collaborate. We keep all good work with us. We have to liaison with the government because just working in your ICU antibiotic policy and you say that it works doesn't it is not doing good. Until and unless community also improves, it's not going to work. We have to have state model, forget about national antibiotic policy because state chapter, we need to creatively think. It's just not adoption, whatever is available, but public education and media presence is also, as a constructive mechanism, is, is, is going to be very, very crucial. So I would like to end by saying <coughs> that at individual level, I believe, the reason of plans being successful is that few prefer walking that extra mile from where unsuccessful plan returns. And that's where we stopped criticizing, we stopped debating, we stopped critiquing, but we started collaborating, we started coordinating, and we publicly partnered and have an antibiotic policy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. Friends, we'll keep the questions for the little bit of the end part of this program because we need, we have determined that we need to keep up the time today so that everybody gets a fair share of